Support for 100 Watts and a Wire is brought to you by 100wattsandawire.com. To subscribe to the show, simply click the RSS feed or subscribe wherever you get your podcast. When you visit, apply for your free 100 Watts ID and learn how you can become a sustaining member. Click the Donate page and pick the option that works best for you. We've got a traveling toolkit, 100 Watts and a Wire gear, and activity days with prizes. That's 100wattsandawire.com. And ICOM. Get out and get active with ICOM's new IC705 and its optional multifunction backpack. And BioNO Power, offering the best performance lithium iron phosphate batteries for your ham radios. Visit BioNOPower.com. That's B I O E N N O P O W E R.com or contact dealers nationwide. And now, from Grid Square Echo Mike 48, this is 100 Watts and a Wire. Sir, yes sir, if you're just joining us, Brian, Kilo Delta 6 Yankee Victor Romeo is the winner of the random drawing. He lives in California. And uh, everybody here is congratulating him. We uh, hope to hear from him uh, really soon. Uh, and tell us what you think. I, I, there's so many people were out there working with this radio before I got to touch it. And, and this is how I use YouTube because episodic shows for me are really hard. There's so many great content creators out there doing ham radio stuff. But I, I don't, may not catch them all in an episodic thing. You know, this is kind of an episodic thing. We goof around, we meet here, and it's like a, a chat show. But when I get, a, you know, the Zygu and I don't know how to fix the cable or roll those pins or why mm-hmm. is this, you know, this power thing is a little, I go to the guys. These guys made a video about it and they're beating these radios up, man. They're letting you know where your money's going. Uh, so that's uh, really important um, that they're out there creating that. Uh, let's see. Congrats to Brian. Uh, more congrats coming in. Let's see. Uh-oh. Gordon says, I didn't like the drink you had to drink the night before. Talk about cleaning yourself out. Yep, absolutely. (laughs) Very important, though, man. It beats you up, and it's hard. Mm -hmm. I used to think the other part of it was the hard part. I always knew the procedure wasn't. Uh, I had, though. Here we go again, Steve. Uh, The second one, I was kind of consciously sedated for it. I actually watched it on the screen. I'm sure I look like this. Drool. <laughs> Who knows what's going on? But I was—I remember watching the screen, so I was kind of there. Now I don't know if it was a misfire on the proper amount of sedation. This time it was like you're going to feel two little things going in your IV, a little burn. Mm-hmm. Sure as hell, Zoop. I was like, "Ooh!" And I just shut my eyes because I didn't want to be the guy who was like, you know, sort of half wake side one eye up. And, <laughs> Yeah, it's awkward for everybody, the nurses and all the whole staff. So I shut my eyes and I felt the second burst go in. I was out. Next thing I know, I was uh, with my wife back in the uh, recovery room. Five minutes later, you're back up and Mm. and going anyway. But do it. It's important. Your digestive health is no joke. Colon cancer is uh, preventable. Well, that's a lot of words there. What's he saying, Steve? Due to the leftovers of Hurricane Delta coming through last weekend, operated in the shack. 7300 100 watts what's a gap titan dx that must be is that a vertical a vertical okay search for other stations and ran some short uh cqs enjoyed it very, nice very much let's see who this is here congratulations to brian way to go my fallout was out of a camper see steve that's, that's cool the, man. the campers <clears throat> let's see setup was a hustler mobile uh, 40 and 20. I did 40 and 20 as well. Uh, the radio was a Kenwood TS440S. I made a whopping two contacts. Well, good for you. That's good. Two is better than zero. You got it up. You know, that's the thing, man. The setup. Actually, mm-hmm. the setup. It, uh, sometimes, depending on what's happening, I enjoy the setup more than, you know, maybe you don't want to call. Oh, I hope Steve doesn't have to go out. Oh, fire, sorry man. about that. That's okay. <laughs> Forgot it's to meet that. <laughs> it's live. Not a problem at all. But sometimes the setup for me is, you know, you go through the process. You refine your systems. You decide whether you're going to keep a box or a bag or what did you forget. And sometimes those are the things for me that 
you know, I enjoy. I've, I've yeah. set up my radio, in other words, and not even tried to make contact. It's the technical part. Good. Yeah, you're getting out there and doing all the technical and the physical work. And then then it's like you just sit back and admire what you've done. And yeah. and then the well, operating technically- kind of be- takes a secondary. You know, I, I test the antenna. I want to see what the mm-hmm. antenna is doing. You know, and, you know, if I put it up a foot higher, I may get a different result. My SWR may shift a little bit, Mm -hmm. you know, so these are the things. But two contacts, nothing wrong with that. Bruce says, hello, Christian and Eve. I only had time to run all out for a few hours. I was running ICOM uh, 756 Pro and an 80 meter sky wire loop. I hear such great things about these wire, uh, these loops, Mm -hmm. uh, 80 meters, nine contacts. So here's even more contacts that probably weren't even submitted because they maybe they felt they didn't get to the the, the 25, 25 total. But all that adds up, and, and we went over 3,000. It's great. But thank you for, for participating. It's just an excuse, guys, to get out. And I'll, I'll announce this again, but the next one, you're thinking, wow, spring seems so far off. But uh, we're June 11th through the 13th. We'll ask the same companies, do you want to participate? And they'll they'll usually give something, but uh, June eleventh through the thirteenth, if you need to mark all that down. Another Steve says work from his home station with the Yasu or the Yazoo. Some people say Yazoo on seventy five meters. I think they say it on purpose. What is the FT eight forty seven? It sounds sexy. One hundred watts and fed all band long wire from Florida. Great time working the stations on forty and twenty. 40 and 20 seems to be like a good portable pocket, right, Steve? Mm-hmm. Yeah, you, you don't have super big antennas. They're, they're manageable, especially for portable. 20 is super manageable. If like 16 feet on a side for a dipole for 40 meters. It's relatively straightforward, simple. Simple antennas, manageable I, to deal with. I keep an 80 in the box, you know. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I think it's it's something we program with. If anything, we probably have too many antennas. I probably have yeah. too many antennas, and I probably go out with too much wire and too much weight. But so, I'm like, well, what happens? What happens? Uh oh, you're gonna you so get so you can take this. This is a off center fed dipole, just right here. So you've got your four to one balance, and then this is all you have. Oh, let me get in the right shot. For this is good for forty meters and above. But now compare it to an 80. And so now we're dealing with a lot more wire. So out in the field, this is more manageable than I'm getting all hung up, <laughs> more manageable than the 80. So that's well, you must a, have just put those together. That, that wire looks too clean and shiny. That's yeah, what I they call ham radio porn. <laughs> How rude yeah. of you in a room full of fellas. Look at this wire. All we all we need all we need is the pole. <laughs> yeah. A mass. This has gone off the rail. But all the uh, yep. So yeah, it, it, we got to you know think about uh, what our uh, uh, what our uh, oh my god <laughs> I went off the rail. Now, look, just went off, so we're, yeah. we're just gone. So so you just made those because you plan to hang them? Or are you going to give those away? I, just t- testing. I was testing and I might give them away. It, uh, we could. It, it was one of those we were talking about um, off center fed dipoles. And so I did a little research and there's, there's some different theories out there. So I had these four to one balance and I just kind of went, well, I got the tower rigged for another project. Let me, uh, and I got a spare feed line going out there. So let me uh, do this real quick. And I you know, measured out some lengths of wire and then, uh, and then strung it up and then just took the analyzer and just started looking at it and, you know, found uh, the goal was to sit there. If I could build an antenna that would work without needing a tuner. And because there was people claiming that and I was like, well, let me see it if I can. And I set it up in an inverted V configuration because that was just the easiest. And it worked. Uh, the 40 was was pretty good. It was everything was below two to one. The 75 meter one, the best I could get on the uh, VSWR was like 2.5, 2.7 on 75 meter, but all the other bands uh, fell right on in. And trying to tune the 75 meter portion of it or the 40 also affected the other bands. And uh, so it was that try to find that compromise that worked. But 
you know, most radios are all coming with built-in tuners and I want, you know what, this will work. Uh, it's under three to one and most, you know, the 7,300, the 450, the, the Yesu 450, talking the, the entry level radios, they'll handle it with uh, no problem. So, uh, that was kind of the goal and, uh, it was just a, you know, a test just to see what, what would do. And then now I got them coiled up and what am I going to do with them? Well, that's, and I wasn't implying we should give your antennas away. I, I, I didn't know what you do if you built them for your club or, or that sort of thing. Uh, there's a question from Ricardo. What uh, size are those off center fed, Steve? As far as the wire size is uh, just 14 gauge antenna wire. And then, um, Basically, an off-center fed dip, uh, off-center fed dipole is the same length as your standard dipole. So, so the uh, the forty meter one right here is about sixty six feet long, and the uh, the uh, the eighty meter one is about one hundred and twenty one hundred and thirty feet somewhere in that uh, general area. Mark says radio porn coffee <laughs> right out the nostrils. Sorry, buddy, that's why I'm here. Uh, <laughs> we don't want to waste the coffee. I don't waste the coffee. That's just bad form. Sorry to make you laugh so hard here. You laugh not. <laughs> okay. Who else is here? Uh, there was somebody else that I think had a question. But, you know, tune in the off-center fed. It gets a little tricky. And for me, I work at about 25 feet when I'm portable. And I mm -hmm. think probably your height being higher, you got under three. When I see three, you know, when I see 3.0 on my SWR, I get a mental block. And I'm like, damn this is a failure and and i know it's not because you could tune it in and any wire is better than no wire and but exactly. i can't get that mast up high enough when i'm portable to make 80 meters come in any better the fact that you were around 27 to 25 tells me you were probably higher than me but i can tune uh, in. actually i didn't put it up i didn't hoist it up that high i only got okay. it up about 25 feet yeah. uh, okay. i mean i kept it low just for that uh, purpose and uh, the other thing was that the the run of uh, cable I couldn't get it up higher than that so okay. all right it, well, that, but it worked that out sense. perfect that makes sense it's a it's a good antenna it takes a lot more space for me mm -hmm. depending on where I am and if I'm going to do 80 meters out there I'm going to do probably the link dipole which is a true 80, but it's tuned for 80 at 25 feet. So the off-center fed for me is kind of better on 20 and 40 at 25 feet. When I add the extra wire to get 80, I'm around three. And then I'm like, eh, oh, you know, it's like there's something in me. And it, it goes all the way back to the days when I first started. And I was kind of programmed as resonant antennas. And I love that. And I love dipoles. And I get that. But if I can't get it closer, three three for me sets off alarms. It's on my alarms on my rig. It's like ah, SWR, oh boogeyman, you know. And I, it's it's something about me more than mm -hmm. anything because it's not that's not bad. Is is SWR the boogeyman, Steve? Yes and no. It's uh, but it all depends on the antenna that you're dealing with. Now for a resonant antenna, I think SWR is bad because uh, you're trying to. You want to tune it for the maximum transfer, but on a on a like an off center fed dipole, you're gonna have some SWR because you're just not gonna be able to to cover everything, all the bands, mono band antennas. Yeah, we want to deal with you know take care of the SWR and we we'll trim the antenna in, in, to the to the point to where we have little to no uh, VSWR. But uh, on an off center fed dipole, the compromise antennas we always talk about. Uh, we have to make that compromise. And it's like, where do you want to make the compromise and uh, and go from there? But uh, in the old days when you had um, the the uh, tube radios, uh, more or less with the Pi network in the final stage, they they didn't care. They, they honestly really didn't care. In fact, uh, a lot of uh, tube-based amplifiers, three to one is no big deal. It's uh, It just takes care of it. The newer radios with the solid state, they have a, they have the issue, and the, the protection circuit will then turn around and throttle back the power and uh, to save the radio, and that's where VSWR starts to come into play. It, you know, for the radio, it's it, but you know, it all depends. You know, what antenna you have up and what you're trying to do and accomplish, and uh, so th I, maybe, I I'm sorry. 
No, I was, I cut you off. I um, apologize for that. I, I remember the old guys with the tubes, not every old, it's just the old timers <laughs> with the tubes. They would go, Hey, you know, because the radios back then, they weren't dealing with SWR the way we all look at SWR. No. And, and I think like a 10, you didn't want to get over 10 or something because 10 would, could burn up your, does this sound familiar? Or, you know, like if you had a 10 something 10 SWR, to one. 10 to one, you could fry up your rig. And that was something that the old schoolers would look at as being your threshold. Like you don't want to mess around with anything more than that because that could blow up your tubes. Am I off with that? Or does that sound well, kind of familiar? You're, you're about right. And, uh, and a lot of people didn't have uh, back in the day. I mean, we're talking way back uh, of having the test equipment that we have now. And um, yeah, there was some via you know SWR bridges and things like that. But uh, but for the most part, the radios handled it. It was like okay, yeah, the radio tunes up. It's taking it. But when you're going into a um, Ten to one, it's almost like a short. It's like uh, this is not working. <laughs> yeah, ten to one would just freak me out. I think yeah. that would just freak me out. So. And you know, but they dealt with things different, and coax was different back in the mm -hmm. old days, and, and a lot of open lines changed. And, yep, it was just it was different, and we've just kind of progressed along. The technology's changed, and uh, and now we have uh, more test equipment. The radios have built-in VSWR bridges in them, and it just yeah it's we've definitely progressed uh, if you're new here to the show or you found us through youtube or you're making your way over from uh, the folks that have been with us for several years on the audio side again the audio side this goes to the audio so you'll always have that we're not taking anything away we've just added in some cameras but we also have a sunday evening hf net steve is net control operator i think it's going to be me and you this weekend steve ian yep. sent me a message he's going to be out uh he's out in georgia usually so we mm -hmm. have a side to side uh kind of coverage there if you've got an hf station you can run power a uh, 100 watts in a wire is not sort of a mandate on the power that you can put out steve and i both run power and as much as we can get out on these antennas as we can and, and you need that sometimes with the net especially in this sun cycle but if you've got a good strong station drop us a line let us know if you want to take a crack at uh you know, running an hour on a Sunday evening net, we sometimes have guests come in and, and visit with us. And anytime we can get a lady in the seat like Rhea, it's ridiculous. And it's fun to listen to. It's it's ridiculous because, for one, she's so good. And you just, I guess we like the ladies. You hear the ladies and it's like, <clears throat> uh, what is it? Bees to a hive. If you have any other questions, uh, or comments you want to share about the fallout, you can uh, do that now. Randy says, I use a 20 and 40 link dipole on soda outings. Works great off his 31-foot fiberglass jack tie pole. Perfect. Or jack kite. 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 Yeah. And that's, uh, that's basically what I'm doing. But I'm at 25 feet, and I'm usually in my vehicle. The Kilo Station again. 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 Kilo Zero Sierra Tango Hotel, your 5-9. Right. Desktop tuners are one of the most popular ham radio accessories. LDG has just come out with the Z100A desktop tuner, and it works with all modern HF radios like ICOM, Yesu, Alinko, Kenwood, and more. The Z100A has LDG's famous 10 to 1 SWR tuning range that matches dipoles, verticals, and fed long wires, G5RVs, or even an off-center fed Wyndham. Easy integration means plug-and-play operation. Installation could not be simpler. The Z100A's tuner goes everywhere with your HF radio. Desktop, portable, parks, islands, or tall summits. LDG is a family-owned and operated company dedicated to bringing advanced quality products to the amateur market. Our focus is anticipating our customers' needs and providing them with world-class support. Don't forget, LDG products carry a full two-year fully transferable warranty. Support is only a phone call or email away. We're always here to help you. LDG Electronics. Everywhere you look, there's an LDG. From wireless to Wi-Fi, this is 100 Watts and a Wire. 
So I guess as a prelude to the coming week, we should talk a little bit about the weather change. And last week we kind of hinted and foreshadowed about your incident where you are. Do you want to talk about that today at all? Or are you, uh, sure. do you, yeah, do you uh... need your uh, props? <laughs> Is this going to no. piss you off? I don't want to upset no, him or like ruin no, his day. No, no, no. It's just, if anything, I was mad at myself and, uh, there's, just like everybody else, you know, we we do things uh, that kind of bite us in the butt down the road. And this one kind of bit me down years later. So I uh, wanted to get on uh, 75 meters, haven't used it pretty much, not at all, all summer long. And uh, so I, uh, the other night, uh, go out to the, uh, come out here into the shack and get on and start tuning up my amplifier starts faulting i'm getting the arc uh, fault and it's like oh great <laughs> just what i need and uh so verified that it was okay is it the amplifier or so i switch into the dummy load here and yep it loads up everything's fine so now it's in the antenna system so i pretty much isolated it uh get out to the uh the outdoor my termination point outside the uh, the building here and uh, disconnect the coax from the panel and uh, take uh, my trusty ohm meter and lo and behold, uh, it's an open and I'm like, oh, geez, and now I have it on the 80 meter antenna like I did, you know, uh, uh, two years ago on the 40 meter antenna. And you remember that when I was repairing the uh, connector um, in the snow. Yeah, because what what ended up happening was that the center conductor of the uh, coax slipped through out of the center pin. And I happened to use a crimp connectors. So all that weight was pulling down and uh, eventually it just kind of pulled back. So I assumed I had that same problem. So down comes the 75 antenna and I look, open up the uh, the weatherproofing and. No, it looks pretty good, but I have an open in, in the coax run. And I'm like, what is going on here? So I cut off the, uh, the connector and it's like, well, it could have been bad. And I, uh, short out the uh, cable, go back to the, <laughs> back to the building. And it's like, nope, I still have an open. And so everything is fed underground from, uh, from my shack here out to the base of the tower. And I'm starting to think, oh, geez, I had a critter, got in, chewed up the conduit and got into the cable. Uh, I wasn't. So I go, OK, now let me pull out the cable and it's getting dark. And uh, I uh, I pull the cable out thinking, all right, I'll find out where the, the break is and then I can dig up the conduit, repair the conduit and go from. And I checked other antennas too to make sure that they uh, had continuity. Lo and behold, I pulled out about six feet. Here's a barrel connection. And I'm like, what the? And it was all taped up and it was all covered. And I, right there was my, my open. And um, so um, I started kicking myself in the pants because I, you know, got, gave myself a gotcha. And uh, so it was like, all right, time to replace the whole whole run. So all that came out, and then a couple of days later, I pulled in a new run of LMR four hundred, and uh, just we do it. I, this is twice uh, that I've uh, extended coax, and so we we do it all. We have a run of coax, and we go, oh, we're a little short. Let me just put a get a barrel here, and I'll just put two together, and I'll and I'll just cover it up with tape and. It was like, lo and behold, it's like why I pulled it through the conduit. I would have never done that. <laughs> so it was <laughs> I, basically in a in a place where you couldn't physically see it. It, it had right. gone back down into the. So you, it, you spent was a in, lot of time and energy trying to figure out what the F and then. Mm -hmm. And it turned out I had a, a, a when I took it apart, the connection was loose and it was like, ah, it probably corroded and opened up and uh, caused the problem. So um and then it just got going, you know, this is a good time to start thinking about maintenance and, you know, testing antennas. And yeah. uh, so I just went through and started sweeping antennas and uh, making sure feed lines are, uh, are uh, you know, in good shape, uh, thinking about 
pull. I'm going to change out some more feed lines here uh, just because they're old and it's time to uh, maybe pull them out, take them out of uh, service here. So the, the cables that I took out, I mean, they're, they're fine now. I'm just going to coil them up, use them as uh, portable. I just, uh, one of them is about a hundred foot run. So uh, that'll be a perfect, uh, just to kind of coil up and take with me out in the field. And if I set up portable or, or temporary setup, then if there's a problem, I just cut off the connectors and crimp on a new one. Or, or in this case, um, I'm utilizing the, uh, the, the DX engineering uh, connectors, they're, they're the ones that seem to sell it. I've, I found these types of connectors uh, years ago, and uh, but my suppliers uh, no longer carrying them. It's uh, you, you solder the center pin, but you crimp the shield. And uh, so it's kind of uh, best of both worlds, and uh, I like it. And, and it, uh, so for those, that's, I definitely use the, uh, these connectors available from DX engineering which works out great. That so next solder. week, we'll start to talk about things that we need to think about working on. Now, some people are already dealing with colder temperatures. You'd probably be the first one to deal with it being so far north. But, you know, we've got people all around the, the country and the world, frankly. And um, so next week, we're going to talk a little bit more about things to think about, connectors, taping up. I know I need to tape up um, at my switcher. I get out there and, you mm-hmm. know, it's summertime or whatever, and you're, you're messing around and, you know, next thing you know, you don't have it taped back up again. And I'm like, oh, geez, I never even put weather tape proofing. back on. Yeah, yes. weatherproofing connectors. And it's, uh, there is a trick. At, uh, you just don't go take your, you know, ordinary, go down to the hardware store or, or wherever and then just throw on a layer of tape and, you know, hope for the best. That will leak. Trust me, it will leak. Uh, living up here in the Pacific Northwest and working in the Western Washington, which is pretty much a wet environment, uh, uh, we've learned the uh, the art of uh, weatherproofing. And uh, if you don't do it right, uh, it'll bite you in the butt. And uh, I have been bitten in the butt uh, a few times uh, at work because uh, we kind of rushed a uh, seal job and later it uh, came back and uh, Darn, I got to go climb that 200 foot tower again to go, you know, re, yeah. you know, re, uh, re weatherproof the connection. Uh, and that just, <laughs> that sucks. So we know that Steve's been bitten so many times in the butt. It's just no mm-hmm. butt, just a really long back, straight, straight I, back. I, no I, butt. I, I got no butt. <laughs> no butt. It's been bitten in it too many times. Jamboree on the uh, air is this weekend. And uh, we'll probably leave you with that thought here. If you know of a, jamboree station on the air i could not look one up and didn't have my log open but uh, i know they're on the air and look at all the activity there uh, in the cw portion of well that's meters. that's What's 20 meters there? right yeah uh, i that's thought crazy. i saw something about a ready there might be a ready contest uh there's the new york uh state uh, qso party and but uh yeah we're just looking at the uh, voice portion of the uh, of 20 meters there on the SDR and it's it's pretty busy it's, so we got a got a fair amount of activity and i got the antenna pointing towards europe so i was up this morning and um, my girls were in as they do when they when they rise and I was listening to a polish station and listening to uh yuri i'm not sure where yuri was um but I think you were listening to them before when we connected this morning. Too. Yeah, the signals coming out of uh, either the um, the UK or or wherever there was a Australian station on uh, before that. I like to hear twenty meters come to life mm-hmm. in the morning. You can kind of hear it. You feel the world turn on twenty meters if you if you're patient enough to listen to it come in. Yeah, this it's morning we had the uh, JAs on 40 on here in the northwest. They I were haven't heard of JA here. in some time. I don't know what it's – maybe my listening pattern is, is getting off. But uh, anyway, we do, we definitely want to uh, let you get at your day. Uh, I want to uh, to congratulate Brian again, Kilo Delta 6, Yankee Victor Romeo. He's in California. His name was pulled from the random drawing, and he will receive a complete – portable station if you want there's no reason why you couldn't work a 20 watt rig out of your home if that's what you wanted to do if that's your setup 
But we've got 50 feet of coax, a solar panel, a bio-NO battery for you, the rig, and an antenna. It's hard to beat. And again, thanks to all the sponsors, LDG, MFJ, Powerfilm Solar, BioNO, and ABR Industries, if you're looking for good cable, coax cable. Um, I worked with them in the past, and I found them. And, you know, when you're serious about looking into specific cables, they can make a cable for you. They can do some, you know, check it out. There's, uh, there's more than one place to uh, get your cables, that's for sure. Let's see, Ricardo is telling us. Let me move that off the screen there. Ready? Oh, I Ready? see New York yep. QSO party. Work all Germany is on now. Nice. There we go. Interesting. Well, good. There's something to chase this weekend. Don't forget about the scouts. Very important. We always talk about the next generation. <laughs> this is an easy one. It's a no-brainer, guys. It's already in place. Um, I know the people that are checking out our show here are always kind to the young people. You're patient uh, with them as uh, there's some breaks sometimes when you say, how are you? You don't hear something. And we, we, we were so live like this that mm-hmm. we got to have that instant feedback. You got to wait a little bit because they may be getting fed information to say back to you. They may not know what five, nine means right now. Oh, so. Yeah. And they're, they're Mike shy and they just like, uh, I'm trying to do this to get my merit badge. <laughs> yeah. I just want the badge or whatever. Exactly. And you keep asking me about my dog and not, you know, but it's good to be patient. Yeah. Take time and work them and show them that this is a community that it's an option for them as they get, you know, they're already at the point where they've got the phones and the, they're swiping around. Let them know why we're cool. All right, Steve. I think we uh, we we beat it to death here. We know we got to yep. take care of our uh, digestive health. Mm-hmm. We uh, it's okay to talk about that with friends. You hear it on seventy five meters. You're not in the mood. Mm-hmm. Spin the dial. But if you're curious, there's always good jokes to come with it. Oh yeah. You know the guy. The guys on seventy five can be a a little crude, um, but uh, you know. Well, they're trying to paint that visual picture. <laughs> well, they're trying to make their buddies laugh at the same joke they've been oh, using yeah. every morning for the last 20 years. But uh, Exactly. Yeah. Thanks for everybody who joined us here today. Lots of great comments, and we appreciate your setups, participating in the fallout. And, uh, and what else? Uh, Did we miss anything? So if, so if you're out going out and uh, setting up portable stations and you're lugging around that car battery, uh, just uh, use a uh, correct lifting techniques that way uh, we won't be having the hernia talk uh next week yes, so and maybe we need to steve maybe <laughs> this is i always say it should be a niche you know it should we should care for each other it's 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 a good point you gotta bend your knees and you know don't don't throw your back out because uh, or get some bio good. no uh, get those bio no batteries right. which are much lighter <laughs> and then lift <laughs> it any way you want you know exactly and then we won't be talking about the hernia talk <laughs> you can uh, you can squat but you know let's see here hello to richard there have a great day folks he's gonna head to the shack see what he can hear on 20 meters it's busy it's busy you can look at my meter there see a lot of activity uh, going yep. on down on the band that's great to see on 20 i wake up early enough there's not so much going on and it's popping it is popping right now and i was listening to international dx stations and uh yeah so next week we're going to get into more of that please like and subscribe and do all the things you want to if you hit the bell on the youtube channel it'll tell you when we're going live and that's really handy for people who mm-hmm. are busy you want to catch it at least it'll say look they're getting ready to go live you want to set a reminder? I do that. I do that for my own thing. I set myself just in case. But um, like and subscribe, and I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for everybody. What did we miss, Steve? Anything else? I think we're good for now. Good for now. Well, All right, friends. Just take get out on the air. QRO to the people, even for you out there in the parks running low power. And uh, just a little foreshadowing, I kind of fell in love with the 705, Steve. Oh, I worked a couple of guys right back to back. I mean, it was like, uh, it was great. It was, I came out here, it was Monday, this past Monday. I came out here into the shack on, I can't remember, it was 40 or 20. And some guy was calling CQ and I, I went back to him and it was Scott, uh, K0MD. And oh, yeah. uh, he was on his uh, on his 705. Wow, did it sound good. And then 
chatted with Scott for a little bit, uh, Dr. Scott, that is. And uh, we went from, and then I spun the dial again and came across another guy calling CQ, another Scott with a 705. So they're, uh, they're getting out there. People are using them and they're sounding great. And uh, both of them pretty much said the same thing there. It's just easy peasy to use. It's like using their 7300, but, you know, portable. It's uh, been kind of nice. So I, I'm so That's, tempted. It's just, oh man, such it's a cool little like, radio. I thought, no, I don't know. I don't know if I'm going to be a buyer this time around. Let it come out and let's, we'll see. I don't know. And then I, you know, for Scott to put out such a glowing review, not that mm -hmm. the radio needed his approval, but this is a guy who runs big power. He runs contest stations with multi towers. He doesn't yeah. play around with a lot of the smaller qrp type stuff and the fact that he took the time uh to to take a look at it and write it down i'm like man this guy's busy like he's working to save people's lives with COVID, mm -hmm. plasma all this stuff so it was kind of like okay there's somebody i know who's a big gun mm -hmm. who is fiddling around with the radio they'll give you 10 watts and he digs it you he know, digs you it know. he was he was having fun and uh it was it was it was cool to be part of that so just to work them well qro to the people friends take care of yourselves until next time we'll be here uh every saturday we like doing this 10 o'clock uh central local time um, go to the website learn more about the 100 watt ids uh all that sort of stuff the information is there for you we're on the youtube channel drop us a line if you have a comment if you're interested in being a net control operator for the sunday night hf net um and uh, we'll try to work you in it's all fun. Yeah, look, yeah, we'll look for us on uh, 40. We're going to probably end up on 40 meters uh, this week. 40 tomorrow. 40 Perfect. tomorrow. 73, everybody. We will uh, catch you soon. Steve, thank you, brother. We will uh, we will talk again soon, and uh, we'll take care of yourselves. We'll catch you next time. To join the 100 Watts in a Wire community, visit 100wattsinawire.com.